Okay, here is the study that seems to show that masks actually can make be worse in terms of spreading uh, the spread of uh, viruses. It can make things worse. It's a Vietnamese study done back on April 22nd, 2015. And there's a cluster randomized trial. Three groups, one, um, one group wore ordinary disposable medical masks. The other ones wore cloth masks during the whole shift. Those two groups wore the, the masks, either the medical masks or the cloth masks during the whole, whole shift. And, um, and then the third group was the control group who only wore the masks as uh, normal practice. Um, now they didn't uh, specify what normal practice is. Um, I'm working under the assumption that it's similar to what it was, uh, what it, yeah, what it was back in 2015 in, in, a, in the United States hospitals. I don't know that for sure, but um, I'm also presuming that it's been normal practice to, when they do use the mask to use the the medical disposable medical type masks. But um, but he, yeah, thinking back, um, I think the majority of the time. Uh, hospital staff thinking back uh, you know, when I was working in a hospital and um, and visiting in hospital uh, the, the majority of the time staff do not wear a mask and uh, so that would be the normal practice is majority if that's the normal practice then the majority majority of the time people would not be wearing any mask and um, I'm surprised that it, the I'll admit that I was a little surprised that there would seem to be significant uh, uh, help in preventing transmission by wearing a medical mask, an ordinary disposable medical surgical type mask, versus uh, the uh, control group. But what was most surprising is that the cloth mask group did the worst. They had the most viruses, infections, um, versus either the control or the medical mask group, significantly worse. So it's as though that, um, and no, now when you were thinking here, now we have all the mandates for masks um, wearing any type of face covering, including cloth masks, uh, is being acceptable. So now is that going to, I'm wondering, if anything, maybe that will make things worse. Let's see here. Let me scroll up here to the conclusion of the study where it said, I'll read here. This study is the first RCT of cloth masks and the results caution against, against the use of cloth masks. This is an important finding to inform occupational health and safety. Moisture retention reuse of cloth masks and poor filtration may result in increased risk of infection. Further research is needed to inform the widespread use of cloth masks globally. However, as a precautionary mask, as a, as a precautionary measure, cloth masks should not be recommended for healthcare workers, HCWs, particularly in high risk situations and guidelines need to be updated. Um, so yeah, that they're saying here in the conclusion of the study that the moist, yeah, that the um, moisture retention, use of cloth masks, and poor filtration may, may result in, in, in increased risk of infection. And so the, these mandates, whether by individual retailers or by the state, may make things worse, as it turns out, at least according to the study. Um, I have down here a graph that shows a graphical representation of the results and the, the attack rate for the, the percentage of the viruses that, um, you know, like, like an infection rate uh, for, for, the, for the percentage of the study participants. And you have the CRI group, which is clinical respiratory illness, um, ILI, influenza, influenza like illness, and the Virus group is the laboratory confirmed viruses. That was the laboratory. I read, uh, 
I said earlier, that's laboratory confirmed respiratory viruses um, for that group. And, and it was uh, surprising how much worse, especially here, like this, the, the black uh, bar chart line is the cloth mask. Look how much worse it did it, for the influenza like illness versus the control group, which is the gray, darker gray, and the medical mask group, which is the lighter gray group. For most of these, they're for the, vi the clinic, the lab confirmed virus and the influenza like vi illness. It's not much difference between the control group and the um, medical mask group. They're about almost the same. I don't know if there's any statistical difference there, but for the virus, uh, lab confirmed virus and the uh, influenza like illness group, the, the cloth masks seem to do significantly worse in terms of infection rate for those those two groups um, then then there's the clinical respiratory illness where the cloth mask didn't do a lot worse may not be significant statistically significantly uh, worse than the control group but certainly did not do better <laughs> than the control group and in here we have the the CRI, CRI group the medical masks um, group seem to do significantly better, um, but as we, as, but of course with these mandates, it is the um, cloth masks are per, 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 uh, perfectly acceptable in um, uh, as, for use as a, as a mask. So what they, yeah, what makes me wonder why why is there being a, a mandate being considered? I'm expecting. Now the governor of Minnesota, I think, is most likely going to mandate masks this week. Um, going to announce a mandate, and so I'm wondering why. What's the point? If it if it was, a lot of the people are just going to be wearing cloth masks, um, so yeah, I don't I don't get it. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that either any mandate should require that medical, medically approved masks be worn, nor am I saying there should be a mandate against cloth masks. I just don't think there should be any mandate at all for any masks. To be worn, they're uncomfortable. They're they hide facial expressions. We humans were social creatures. Important important part of being social creature is our facial expressions. And these masks masks they they, they hide those expressions. And I think it should be up to the uh, individual to decide whether or not there's a uh, make their own decision about there any uh, risk benefit ratio of uh, wearing a uh, of wearing a face mask. I mean, we could get to the point where if, if you know if it's if we're just making all the decisions public decisions based based on possibility of. Uh, like the de a death rate, for instance, um, I think it, uh, we could use, we could do like a reductio ad absurdum argument against that, whereby well if that's the case if we're going based on based solely on public policy to reduce reduce the rate of death then we should implement policies such as requiring all food to be pureed in before eating in order to prevent prevent choking deaths. Think of all the lives that would be saved if that was became law. All restaurants have to puree their food before serving it. And all homes must do it as well. And even if you're in your own home, you better puree your food. You gotta prevent those choking deaths. Just think of all the lives that will be saved. 
Um, of course, recreational swimming would have to be banned. You know, there's a lot of drowning deaths every year. So, recreational swimming is out outlawed. In order to think of all those drowning deaths that will be saved. Remember, that's the main priority here. That's what public policy is now based on. Preventing deaths. Um, now, we're going to also have to outlaw ladders. You know, prevent falling. Deaths from falling, a lot of them happen every year on ladders, so they're going to have to be confiscated. Everybody's going to have to turn in their ladders, and uh, they're going to have to be removed from hardware stores. No more ladders anymore, sorry. Of course, you can't go on your roof um, anymore either. That's going to have to be outlawed, because you know, people fall from roofs when they, you know, every year. That A lot of those happen, so... Um, yeah, if you see your neighbor under, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to have to be banned. You can't, can't allow that anymore. That's obvious. It's out the door. And uh, the building codes, all multi-story buildings will have to use an elevator. No more stairs. And again, to prevent, uh, prevent falling deaths. It, then they're going to have to phase in uh, uh, retrofitting older houses to take out the stairways, to install elevators. Um, yeah, and it can't be a pedestrian anymore. You never know. If you walk down the sidewalk, a car could, you know, go over the, jump over the curb, and you could get hit. And uh, let's add motorcycles. Oh, boy, th those are gone. Forget it. No more motorcycles. Bicycles. Oh, sorry. They're, they're going to be, have to be banned also. Um, no, no motorcycles no, and cars. Like I think you know, for decades now, 120 people on average in the United States die, die in automobile accidents. So that, that, there's no way we can allow automobiles to be driven anymore. They're all going to have to be um, recycled. They're going to recycle all the automobiles. There's, because there's no question, 120 deaths every single day. You add those up over the years. It's hundreds and thousands of deaths over the decades. Oh, we got to get, yeah, well, that'll be a lot of good, um, provide a lot of good steel um, to recycle, you know, recycle the cars. But they're, they're not going to be allowed anymore. Because, like, the public policy now is to... We, lives are on the line here. We gotta make all our laws based on lowering the uh, the, the rate of death. Sorry, sorry, folks. It, it's all, and you know we can't do it low anything that that uh, involves risk, where you could where you could die. So the big brother knows best. The government knows best. Um, we're, we're gonna have to. No, Allah, anything that involves any amount of risk that you could possibly die, uh, where you might fall, and um, a lot of falling deaths every year. So I'm not sure what's going to be allowed anymore, but at least we'll be safe. And we, you know, our government's looking out for us. It's all, it's for our own good. We should stop worrying our pretty little heads off. Uh, but what did what you know what we can and can't do and we just let the government think for ourselves and and You know that they're watching over us. They they, they care. They don't want us to die. So we gotta We, we won't be able to do much anymore um, Our lives will be very limited, but at least we'll be safe, you know We won't have hardly any freedom um, but but uh, Who cares about freedom when we're talking about we're talking about saving lives here. Come on. This is life and death we're talking about. So, we, we gotta do what the government tells us to do. So we'll be safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, everybody, let's, let's fall in a line here. Let's, let's do what the government tells us to do and stop, stop, uh, stop, you know, they're, they, know, they're, they know what's best for us. They, they really do. So, we're just gonna have to um, stay confined and very limited and, uh, only do things that are, have z zero, little to no risk whatsoever, and then then we'll be safe, and uh, so many lives will be saved from that. So, 
I'm, I'm counting on you. Do what the government tells you. Stay safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah.